show, what I'm talking about is uh, the paranormal, uh, which is a huge part of my life personally. Um, and it's a topic that I love to talk about, and I've covered it from every perceivable angle that I can think of. But tonight's show is different, because I'm not talking about the paranormal. I'm talking about a cult, and let's be honest, it's what it is, it's a cult, I, I don't want to offend anybody, uh, you know, I, I don't want to uh, make anyone feel like, like I'm attacking, you know, this or that, um, because honestly, I don't care what you believe, that's on you, um, but 
when you take an organization that is supposed to be based on faith and it is actually inflicting harm upon people, uh, well, to speak bluntly, that's when I fucking stand up and do something about it. And it just so happens that me doing something about it is taking the form of my radio show. Um, so if you, if you're, you've been living under a rock and you haven't seen, uh, Lee Remini's show, Scientology in the Aftermath, or you haven't listened to the podcast or, or Aaron Smith Levin's podcast or any of the YouTube videos he's done, if you haven't looked at Mike Rinder's blog, if you have no clue what I'm talking about, well, I'm not going to get into all that and, uh, I would strongly suggest you watch Scientology in the Aftermath, that's probably the best way um, to get educated about it if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, if you do, if you're, you're uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, no, if you're, if you're not infatuated, if you're obsessed, I guess, that's not even the right word, uh, with what is going on with Scientology, like I am, uh, you may have made some of the connections that I'm about to make tonight yourself. Uh, I don't presume or assume that, uh, I'm the only one that, that thinks this way, uh, in, in about this, uh, cult, uh, I, I don't pretend to be the most knowledgeable on this subject, um, but, and I will say this, I am, just in case Scientology decides that they want to come after me later, let me clear the air here. I'm a recovered drug addict. Uh, I am a uh, person that has anger issues. I've never beat my woman or my kid. Um, but I do have anger issues. I... I have a overinflated sense of justice, so there you go. If you want to come after me, there's some ammunition for you because I don't really give a shit. <laughs> okay. The connections I'm making tonight um, just came on me uh, uh, suddenly. Um, I have watched uh, Scientology in the Aftermath, by the way. Uh, a gazillion times now, like the whole ser series, uh, every season, multiple times. Um, and I do this a lot in part because, uh, I'll do that with things that I, I just like. And also I do it because, uh, I'll always find some little nugget of, of, information in there that I didn't notice the first time around or the second time around or even the eighth time around a lot of the time. Uh, and I, and I like to pick these things apart and, uh, because I like to find out the truth for myself. I don't like anybody to tell me, Oh, well, this is true. Or this is true. Or that's true. Or, you know what? Fuck you. I'm, I'm going to figure it out on my own. All right. So, uh, I was watching an episode of Scientology in the Aftermath, and it just hit me. There's a lot of similarities between the Church of Scientology and World War II era Nazi Germany. Okay? And I'm going to illustrate this right now. So, uh, much like, like uh, Nazi Germany, 
Scientology was founded by a narcissist. And I mean, when I say narcissist, I'm not just talking about, oh, I like the way I look in the mirror. I'm talking about somebody that is so full of themselves, they think they're God. And nothing else matters to these type of individuals, by the way. Um, both parties um, began with the writing of a book. Okay? Uh, with, you know, the Nazis, it was uh, Hitler before he actually invented the Nazi party, wrote a book called Mein Kampf, which I'm not going to get into that all translation. If you want to check that out and, and see the similarities on your own, look it up. Um, and, of course, with, you know, uh, Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard uh, wrote Dianetics. Okay, so... And they they both wrote books. And here's the thing. There are some similarities I've discovered in both books. Not everything, obviously, because L. Ron Hubbard wasn't say, saying, you know, a lot of the shit that Hitler said. But there are some things in there that are, are directly co collate that are basic you know, self-help type shit. The only difference is, is LRH didn't take it to the extremes that Hitler did, obviously. Um, and he wasn't including, like, the whole, whole, well, you know, if you're a Jew, you gotta die kind of thing. But he kind of does, too, because there's this thing, and, and if you watch Scientology in the aftermath, they, there's actually an episode where they get in detail about this. Uh, there's this thing in Scientology. I, I'm not sure if it's in Dianetics or if it's in the second. It might be in the second book. Um, but it, either way, it's called the tone scale, right? And it, it basically le uh, labels all these like uh, archetypes of people, right? And it ranks them from highest to lowest. And like like the lowest form uh, of of person on this tone st scale are the undesirables. And what did Hitler call the Jews, and the Gypsies, and and criminals? They were the undesirables. So so there's already that kind of same labeling going on in these books, okay. So that that's that's the first thing, you know. And uh, fact number two about both LRH and Hitler, they were both severe homophobes. Like, big time. Which means, you know, anybody that's ever come out of the closet probably knows this. Homophobes generally are in the closet. I'm just saying, you know, it, you might be bashing gays, but the reality is, is you want to suck a dick. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> call it what it is. That's all I'm saying. You know, I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm just putting it out there. So, there's that. They both not only believed, but have enforced policies for what they call eugenics, which is selective breeding. Okay? And, and uh, the way that LRH has done this, or not just LRH, but Scientology in general, is they actually have a policy... Um, that they're claiming they're no longer enforcing, but they had a policy of uh, uh, enforced abortions. 
Okay? So that's number two. Thirdly, they both have secret police. With Nazi Germans, it was the Gestapo. With Scientology, it was the, the, what do they call it, the, uh, Dirty Deeds Committee, or OSA, OSA, um, which Mike Rinder, if you watch Scientology in the Aftermath, is very adamantly, uh, you know, admitting to the fact of his involvement in that when he was a Scientologist. You know, and and I, w- I will say this, a uh, little side note here. Um, I have an enormous amount of respect and love for both Leah and Mike Render, um, Leah Remini and Mike Render, because uh, Leah I love just because she she was so vocal and so opinionated about uh, these things that are going on, and and she wasn't going to just lay down and let it happen. She she needed to do something, and she spoke out, and she still speaks out today. Um, I strongly recommend her show, uh, Scientology in the Aftermath, as well as her podcast, Scientology Fair Game. Um, I I would, and this is just my opinion, I I think that they deserve the Nobel Peace Prize. Honestly, because of everything they're doing to, to, uh, Right, give people their lives back. You know, they they deserve accolades for that, is what I'm getting at. And uh, secondly, uh, Mike Rinder, I have an enormous amount of respect for. I've never met the man. I hope one day I do, but I've never met him. But I guarantee you that if I ever were to meet him, I'll be throwing a hug on that dude because uh, what he's done is incredibly brave. He's admitted and continues to admit to his own wrongdoing in the name of Scientology. That's definition of brave right there. Okay, so uh, anyways, continuing on. So uh, they both ha- have their secret police. So, uh, you know, everybody knows, uh, and I'm not going to rehash everything, what the Gestapo did. Um, but what OSA did and continues to do is they uh, enacted this policy in Scientology that according to the church, doesn't exist anymore, even though they are spending all of their tax-exempt money on doing it even today, um, called Fair Game, where uh, they will actively attempt to silence and or destroy any opponent of the Church of Scientology, or any perceived opponent, too. Um, you could be a reporter just doing an interview because it's your job and end up having PIs parked out in front of your house, end up getting, uh, you know, members of the church with picket signs out in front of your house, you know, screaming all this ignorant shit, trying to get your neighbors to turn against you, you know, all this kind of shit. Now, Having said that, please, if any member of Scientology is listening to this podcast right now, I want you to know, I fucking welcome you to try. Okay? Because there's nothing you can do to me that life hasn't already fucking done, number one. And number two, go ahead and turn my neighbors against me. They're already against me because of my dog. Pretty much, yeah. Right? I have a very, very... uh, He's a very sweet boy, but he does not like strangers at all. And he's gone after people in my neighborhood. 
Okay, I'm not denying that. So you want to come after me? Fine. Come after me. I fucking dare you. Seriously. Because if you... And especially, come, please, come, trespass on my property. <laughs> I want you to trespass on my property. I want you to come up on my fuck. not even the sidewalk, just come up a little bit on my fucking driveway and see what happens. I fucking dare you. And, you know, I'm so happy that, that, uh, I was never a Scientologist, and I didn't have to deal with all the shit that you're talking about. And and uh, I know me, I know my personality, uh, and and it's probably a good thing I never was, because I would have ended up in prison. I, I'm telling you right now, the the first time David Miscavige would would swing on me, it's all over but the crying. <laughs> all right, because. Like, yes, he, he might be, like, equivalent to the Pope or whatever. And and I understand why people wouldn't, you know, defend themselves or, or lash out or whatever. But I just know me. Like, I'm telling you, I, I have dreams sometimes about beating the shit out of this guy. That's how evil he is. Okay? Anyways, moving on. So, uh, uh, that's what OSA does. And, uh, the other similarity is, um, in, in their policies about, uh, uh, what is it, uh, I forget what they call it in Scientology, this what? What is it? It's uh, disassociating, or, or I forget what the word is. Where where you have to like like actively not speak to Disconnect. disconnection. Their disconnection policy, right? Hitler had the same thing. Believe it or not, if uh, someone you were close to was labeled as a, uh, uh, you know as he would call it, a des- uh, undesirable person, you were expected to report on them to the Nazi party. Just like in Scientology, if somebody is speaking out against the church, it, and you're a member of the Church of Scientology, you have to do what's called an, a KR, a knowledge report. Same thing. Only difference between these two parties is the scale and the extremity, right? Because, as far as I know, I mean, yes, there there are definitely deaths that Scientology is responsible for, but they are not actively going out and killing a group of people because they don't agree with them. Although, if I think if they could, they probably would. But really, that's like pretty much the only difference as far as I can see. Their policies are almost exactly the same. They both have weird beliefs within their dogma. Okay? Um, with the the Nazi party, their beliefs were of the um, variety of, well, you know, uh, Hitler is essentially God, and he's going to uh, create this great race that is going to do everything great in the world ever, you know, yada, 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 which was, you know, the Aryan race, and Whatever. Um, and with L. Ron Hubbard, it is, well, you know, we're going to change the world, we're going to do all these great things, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, the, the whole Xenu thing, which I'm not going to get into because it's not fucking important. It really isn't. 
like like uh, the whole Zenu thing. If you if you don't know, is this belief that this this evil alien overlord named Zenu came to uh, Earth, which was called Tijiak at the time, according to Scientology, seventy five million years ago, and took these these human like alien people called Thetans and threw them into volcanoes and then nuked the volcanoes. And the, 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 those spirits of all those people is what makes up the human body. Right? Forget all that bullshit. Because they, that's not even the important part. Okay? That, that's like a red herring basically thrown in there to... Honestly... It, Keep in mind that LRH was a science fiction writer. And, and that'll probably, you know, tell you everything you need to know about that little tidbit right there. I think his imagination just got away f- from him one day and he wrote that shit. Um, but whatever. It doesn't matter. But they both had, like, these kind of weird extreme beliefs of, well, you know, you, you have to behave this way or that way or, you know you're going to get fucking spanked, basically. And they both had secret presence. Uh, with Scientology, it's called RPF, or Re- the Rehabilitation Project Force. And, well, obviously Nazis had, you know, war camps and concentration camps and death camps all over Europe. We know that now, you know, because it's history, but same fucking thing. It's the same fucking thing. How am I the only one that sees this? Well, I'm probably not, but I'm, I'm, as far as I know, I'm the only one that's outright saying it. I think, this is my opinion. Right, and and you could take it or leave it or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. But uh, in my opinion, I think L. Ron Hubbard modeled very much of Scientology after the Nazi Party during World War Two. There, there's too many direct correlations. For that not to be the case. In my opinion. I think LRH was inspired. By. The works of Hitler. And we know that he was fascinated. Absolutely fascinated with the idea. Of having ultimate control over another person's mind. Essentially brainwashing. Which he's done. He did it before he even wrote Dianetics, by the way. Um, I believe it's Paulo Verde or Paulo Alto, I forget which one. But there, there's this house that he had in California. Um, I believe it was before he wrote Dianetics where he had people locked up in rooms of this house as, as a means of... Uh, experimenting on them to try and figure out how to control them. And it, it whatever the fucking house was, it was actually covered in, in an episode of Ghost Adventures. Uh, they actually investigated it. But yeah, crazy shit, right? I mean, and they were both backed Arguably, by maybe not, maybe corrupt isn't exactly the right word, but uh, subjugated governments. Right? Scientology got tax exempt status because they terrified individually IRS agents. And so. They said, yeah, have your tax-exempt status because we don't want this shit no more. Think about that for a second. 
You know, what's the difference between Scientology and a terrorist organization? Or even the Nazi, Nazi war party from over two. Nothing. Absolutely not. The only difference is death count. That's it. They, they, they operate exactly the same fucking way. And, and just like the, the Nazis in World War II and terrorists nowadays, they operate on the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. They are very segmented. Right? Like, like parishioners, as they call them, which are just your, your average Joe members of the church of Scientology, the people that go in for services and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, have no idea what's going on in the Sea Org, which is the, uh, it's the ecclesiastical body of Scientology. It's, it's essentially like their priesthood. They have no idea what happens there and vice versa. You know, and then there's all these little subgroups, just like terrorists or or Nazis from back in the day. They were very segmented, like 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 the Gestapo wouldn't know what the SS was doing, and the SS wouldn't know what the Gestapo was up to, or or uh, you know, members of Al Qaeda wouldn't know what their leadership was up to, or whatever. I think you get my point. It's very segmented, and that's dangerous. Because it gives the people on the top too much deniability. And trust me when I say this, David Miscavige needs to be held accountable for a lot of shit. Much more shit than we're even aware of. And we're aware of a lot at this point. There are suicides that could have been prevented that were not prevented because the the number one thing in Scientology is their anti-psych. No psychology, no psychiatry, no therapy. Nazis were the same fucking way. They were anti-psychologists. And they also, here's the other thing that uh, (laughs) is very, very similar. Uh, In Nazi Germany, they wanted to dumb down the population to keep them mentally and emotionally pliable. And so what they did is they burned all the books. Right? Well, Scientology hasn't burned books, but what they have done is if you're a child in in Scientology and you're a member of the Sea Org, you don't get educated. You don't go to school. You're doing Scientology 24-7. A lot of parishioner children are doing the same thing. You don't really go to school. You're just doing Scientology. Well, why is that? And this isn't to say that Scientologists are, are by any means stupid people. They're not. They're very, very smart, most of them. Um, they're just under this, this illusion that was dropped down by L. Ron Hubbard and by David Miscavige and, and others of their ilk. But they're not being educated. And the reason for that is it's a means of of uh, control and gaining control because it, it makes uh, a mind much more malleable when it's an uneducated mind. When there's nothing in there, they can put in whatever they want. And we see examples of that elsewhere, but, you know, Scientology is like, under the microscope nowadays, so why not? 
point that out too, because they're up to no good. And I, I think your your average Scientologists are, are honestly good people. Are they're in it because they want to help, and they're under the illusion that that's what's going on is that they're helping people, but they're not. Scientology has spent billions upon billions of dollars on real estate to to build these fancy buildings that are fucking empty. They're not supplying any public benefit at all, and that's the number one reason why they need to lose their tax-exempt status. Because, and this should piss off every fucking buddy, by the way, because of one simple fact. When someone is tax-exempt, it is the average citizen that picks up the fucking slack. They're not paying taxes, and our taxes have increased. That's fucking bullshit. So that they could spend millions of dollars every fucking year on private investigators to harass and fucking silence their critics. Well, here's a little thing for you, Scientology. I don't give a shit. Waste your money on me. Because I'll tell you two things right now that are very important that you're going to find out if you do. Number one, it's a waste of your fucking money. And number two, you're not going to find out Jack because there's nothing for you to find out. I'm open and honest about every fucked up thing I am and have ever fucking done. So please. And the other thing is too, I was in the United States Army and before that I was a warrior by blood. You do not want to go to war with me. (laughs) Because I don't give a shit. I really don't. You want to come at me, I will come at you twice as hard. And trust me, you don't fucking want that because I will guarantee you the butt fucking that you've received at the hands of Anonymous will be as nothing in comparison. Because I will be loud and I will be public and all of your PR will go bye-bye. So please, come at me. I fucking beg you. (laughs) You do not want to come at the dirtiest player in the game. (laughs) Because I don't care. I really don't. I don't care. I have nothing to lose, by the way. If you, if you think you can take anything away from me, you, you can't. I don't have anything. I have my dogs, and if you come at my dogs, I swear to God, there's not a safe place for you on the planet. I will go anywhere and do anything to get at you if you come after my mutts. I'm dead serious. So you might as well strike that fucking idea out of your head right now, because I... Unlike you, who are going to do everything secondhand by hiring people to do it for you, I'm going to do that shit myself, and I don't fucking miss. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but it's too funny. Yeah, but it's true. I, exactly. <laughs> it's absolutely the truth. So, you know what? Come at me, I don't care. But... I'm not going to sit back and let you do the shit that you do. When I find out about it, I'm going to talk about it. And I historically have not had this kind of show. Okay? My shows have all been about the paranormal uh, and things of that nature. And I've had, you know, uh, musical stuff. But... You come at me, I'm going to make it my daily mission to find out new shit and to vocally and very proudly podcast about it. And if you think that has no effect, then you're not paying attention. Because I haven't entered the game yet. And already, 
your recruitment rates are drying up. Because there's too much out there to be ignored. Will you make me enter the game? And there will be no recruitment. There will be no new money coming in. And there will be a whole lot of attention on you that you don't want. I will make sure of it. I will bleed to make that happen. So my advice to you is sit there like the bitch that you are and take it. Because if you get all in a tiffy and come at me, then you have caused warfare. And when it comes to war, I'm not afraid to hit below the belt. So there's your warning, Scientology. Now, I don't think that Scientologists in and of themselves are evil people. But, once again, there's another similarity between the Nazi Party of World War II and Scientology. Um, Your average Nazi back then wasn't an evil person to them. They were just, you know, soldiers, you know, doing their duty for their country. But a lot of them also, keep in mind, didn't know about the evil, dark shit that was being done, essentially, in their name. You know, they they didn't know about uh, the concentration and death camps, a lot of them. Um, They were kept very ignorant of that on, on purpose. Um, and the same kind of thing happens in Scientology, where like your average parishioner is kept very ignorant of, of like things like the RPF or the uh, the uh, youth camps that they had, and and still kind of do, where uh, children are being victimized. Uh, many of them, were, at one point or another, were even molested, and there was a lot of that same kind of shit, you know. Oh, and that's the other thing is too. Uh, Scientology has uh, uh, youth ministries, something, and, uh, you know, Hitler had Hitler Youth. So, there you go. Oh, wow, I'm down to like two minutes. Wow. Okay, well, uh, I guess that's just about all I have for tonight, folks. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time, my pack, my tribe, peace.